Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of EVE Echoes. Tonight on the show, we will be continuing our series of lore, and tonight we're going to delve a bit deeper on the understanding of the emergent empire that is hidden from the view of the others. As we all know, uh, Terran, according to ancient scriptures, is a term used to refer to a hypothetical progenitor race that colonized New Eden prior to the collapse of the Eve Gate. Little is known about this race, though they left numerous artifacts across the cluster, including the old and ancient Stard Gate and the Eve Gate itself, not to mention not to mention the three direct descendants of Terrans. Um, the Ancients, as one might say they're called, uh, the Talokan, the Sleepers, and the Yang Jung, which were the initial colonists of New Eden Cluster. So we all know they came through the Eve Gate, but what is actually the Eve Gate? The Eve Gate is a giant jump gate located in the New Eden system. The New Eden system gives the name to the entire cluster. It's located in the Genesis region. The letters Eve are prominently written over the top of the gate, although the meaning is unknown. The gate is littered with unknown markings and unknown writings. Although located three light years from New Eden's star, the gate can be seen as a bright blob in the sky. At this distance, it would take several years of high-speed travel to reach. The Sisters of Eve, and possibly others, conduct research on the gate despite the enormous amount of radiation it emits. It is common belief that several millennia ago, humanity's ancestors travelled through the gate and its then stable wormhole to populate the New Eden Cluster. When the wormhole later collapsed, the colonies were severed from the worlds which sustained them, bringing a dark age upon the inhabitable worlds. Millions perished, and other colonies in the ensuing chaos. It is rumored that the wrecks of many ships destroyed during the final, uh, the, the gate's final days, still float in the void around the Eve Gate. The lack of wreckage detected by scanners has not called the speculation. Some say that ancient vessels have been cloaked by the Jove to prevent advanced technolo technology from falling into the wrong hands. The Eve Gate is part of the religious beliefs of the Sisters of Eve. They believe it to be a gift from God, and that it is His will that they study it thoroughly and unlock its secrets. According to the Sisters, God Himself lives on the other side of the gate. So the initial colonists were three ancient races of Terran origins. The Sleepers, the Talokan, and the Yang Jung. Little is known about these three ancient races, however, it is speculated that one ancient race in particular was the progenitor of the Jove. The Sleepers are, as the other ancient races, descendants of humans and have populated New Eden thousands of years ago before they vanished mysteriously. These days, the only remains of them in New Eden are ruins and strange artifacts. Some of those ruins can be found around Minmatar space. From those few known artifacts, it was deduced that the Sleepers were masters of virtual reality, neural interfacing and cryotechnology. But at one point, a splinter cell ruptured from the Sleepers and actually became the Jove. We might be delving into the special zone of this uh, in a future episode, but for now, let's dive in a bit on what the Jove represents. Jove is the most mysterious and elusive of all the peoples of Eve. The Jovians number only a fraction of any of, of their neighbours, but their technological superiority makes them powerful beyond all proportion. Although definitely human, the Jovians often seem to the other races as though they are not. The reason being is that they embrace genetic engineering as the way to solve any and all the problems which plague the human race. Over the thousands of years since, the Jovians have experimented with every kind of genetic modification their technology allowed. As their powers grew, they began to believe they were capable of anything, and this led them into increasingly more bizarre mutations of their bodies and minds, a policy rigorously backed up by strict governmental control. 
but one fateful moment in their history made them lose this control for a few generations, and the results were catastrophic. By this time, the Jovians had begun interfering with their basic instincts, curbing their aggression and sexual instincts, and cultivating strange new ones instead. Since the Shrouded Days, as the Jovians call their momentary social eclipse, they have been trying to put the pieces together again, but their DNA structure has in many ways been damaged beyond repair. The consequence is that dreaded Jovian disease, genetic in nature, it is not infectious to other races, but among Jovians, it causes a depression so deep and serious that the victim loses the will to live, and death results within a few days or weeks. Despite this, the Jovians escaped the chaos that followed, followed the closure of Eve remarkably well. Within the space of only a few centuries, they had recovered, and were only once again running a high-tech society. They settled in a number of systems and founded an empire lasting for nine millennia. But even if the Jovians are by far the most technologically advanced of the races of Eve, they have still not recovered the splendor of their first empire. The disease within them keeps them in a reproductive straitjacket, preventing them from increasing their numbers sufficiently for their current empire to flourish. The Jovians crave knowledge, any knowledge at all. Their superior technology has enabled them to infiltrate the other races with bugging devices and sensors, giving them unrivaled access to the information, which they use to maintain their strong position among the other races. The Jovians sell a lot of their advanced technology equipment to the other races, and it is this, more than anything else, which keeps the others at bay. In YC-118, the Jovian Directorate transferred control of its corporations in the core regions of New Eden to the Society of Inner Thought, designated the Society of Conscience Thought as its successor in Concord, and finally withdrew from New Eden's astropolitical scene once and for all. The present whereabouts and disposition of the Jove people is unknown, and the regions of the Jove Empire remain inaccessible by normal means. But what exactly is this Jovian disease? How did the Jovians manage to contact it? Well, the Jovian disease is primarily a genetic disorder among the Jove that eventually results in psychological breakdowns and death. The disease has no known cure and is non-communicable, yet it afflicts every Jove eventually. The Jove blamed the disease on their extensive bioengineering, but they are unable to utilize their technology to reverse it. The exact origin and history of the Jovian disease is mysterious, with the Jove only offering bits of information about it. While it is possible that the disease existed, at least in some form, during earlier parts of Jove history, its current fatal variant effectively what is being referred to with the Jovian disease, Monica, first arose as the Jove exited a time known as the Shrouded Days when they manipulated their own genetic structure to extreme degrees. These manipulations eventually came to an end, but the damage had already been done. Some fatal element had been introduced into the Jove genetic structure. The Jove tried many things to fight the affliction, but found even their advanced technology impotent against it. Eventually, they created the three Jovian motherships and placed the majority of their population into cryostasis, leaving their home region in the process, which was the Curse region. Any who showed symptoms of the disease were left behind to perish. However, the relocation failed. The Jovian disease continued to afflict the Jove. It led to the Amar, believing them weak and ripe for conquest, though the technological superiority of the Jove allowed them to prevail in the short-lived Amar-Jove war. Some believe that the capsule was given to the Kaldari in a convoluted effort to discover a cure for the disease, but if so, it has yet to bear fruit. Eventually, the Jove cut off all contact between themselves and the rest of the cluster. Today, the Jove are rarely seen by the rest of the New Eden, leading to persistent rumors that the disease has claimed them completely, though long-range sensors continue to report activity in Jove's base. The Jovian disease has two forms. The rarer and lesser known form strikes Jove fetuses, causing them to suddenly die as they de develop in the artificial wombs. 
One in ten Joe fetuses die in this manner, and there is no way to predict or prevent it. The more common form presents itself as a continual decline in mental health. In its initial stages, this can be only long bouts of mild apathy, an inability to concentrate on tasks, a loss of appetite and poor mental focus. These symptoms progress to depression and mild dementia, with the individual being unable to find purpose or joy. In its final stages, the afflicted is unable to perform any but the most basic tasks, believing any effort is pointless and wasted. In these stages, additional psychological disorders may arise, such as paranoia, psychopathy or sociopathy. Finally, the Jove simply loses the will to live and will cease eating and drinking, eventually succumbing to dehydration. The Jovian disease has a quick onset. An individual may be healthy one day, only to show sudden signs. When the disease first strikes, however, is variable. An individual may live a hundred years before the symptoms manifest, while another may show them after only a few decades. The progression from one stage to the next can also vary, though once it reaches its final stages, death usually follows shortly after. The exact cause of the Jovian disease is poorly understood. The Jove blame its existence on extreme genetic tampering that is reflected in their inhuman appearances. However, similar genetic manip manipulation is unable to cull the disease. Whatever gene or combination of genes causes this disease remains a complete mystery. Certain members of the Jove, known as modifiers, are more susceptible to the disease than others. These individuals can constantly tinker with their own genetic code, both in an attempt to make themselves more perfect beings and out of pure base curiosity. Because this tampering accelerates onset of the disease, there is some belief that it arises out of genetic manipulation altogether. There is no cure for the Jovian disease. The Jove have expanded an extensive amount of time and effort into discovering a cure and it remains one of the primary goals of their civilization. For further alterations of their genetic code in an effort to stymie the disease seem to only have negative effects, actually accelerating its onset. At times, the Jove have experimented with splicing genetic code from the other races of New Eden into their own. This has proven ineffective in stopping the disease, however, though as it has not yet been shown to speed up the disease, it remains an area of scientific interest. There are some conspiracy theories that the Jove actually introduced the capsule and gave it to the Kaldari in an effort to harvest data and genetic samples for this research. If this is true, it seems to have been completely ineffective. Some therapies have been shown to slow progression of the disease slightly. Psychological counseling and antipsychotic drugs can temporarily counteract the depression associated with the disease. However, eventually the depression worsens until the Jove gives up taking the medication or attending sessions, which typically causes a rapid deterioration and decline. Rumors persist of other, often unsettling attempts at establishing cure vectors, including the usage of advanced medical technology to forcibly keep the afflicted Jove alive far beyond what would be considered legal or even ethical in other societies. It should be kept in mind that by this stage, the subject in question would not only have to lost their ability to function as human beings under any definition, but would in fact have their consciousness geared by the disease to desperately crave death. The decision not to grant this to them, under the presumption that the Jove are in fact engaging in this kind of experimentation, is not one that receives much open debate. All in all, we have no idea if the Jove have perished completely or if they are still somewhere around trying a probing for information the existing civilizations of New Eden at present. We do know that they are situated in three regions of space in the top right corner of the New Eden Cluster. The, the three regions are inaccessible to all others. During the early days of the emergent civilizations that we know of today, the Kaldari, Minmatar, Galente and Amar, the Amar were first to conquer uh, space and as we know, they have seen that the Jove were suddenly feeling weak and decided that the space that Jove live 
might be theirs for the taking. This led to the Amar Jove War, which lasted for a short period of time, because it was capitalized by the Jove at the Battle of Vakathios. The Battle of Vakathios was the major engagement of the Amar Jove War. It was fought in 23,216 AD in the system of Vakathios, now known as Atios, between 200 ships of the Amar Navy and a detachment of Jove ships headed up by a Jovian mothership, one of the three Jovian motherships ever produced. The battle was a massive defeat for the Empire and had far-reaching consequences. It was, for a time, the largest battle in New Eden's history. At that time, the Amar had not enslaved a large population since its conquest of the Minmitar began almost 800 years prior. Starved for new resources of slaves, the Empire was eager to reclaim one of the other races it had recently encountered. However, the Galantic Federation was considered too powerful to assault, and it was determined to be undesirable to attack the Kaldari state, as it provided a counter to the Federation. The Jove Directorate, however, appeared to be weak and susceptible to invasion, to the leadership of the Amar Empire. At the time, the full technological capabilities of Jove were fairly unknown to the Empire, who only saw the lesser numbers of the Jove and viewed them as vulnerable. The Empire decided to strike first in the system of Vakathiot, a border system which contained only a small Jove research station, as a show of might. For weeks beforehand, they broadcasted messages of Imperial dominance and the Amar position as God's chosen. Meanwhile, elements were working against the Amar Empire. A Jove named Grios obtained the full battle plans of the Amar fleet from a naval admiral named Fars Akredon. Fars, who had begun to lose his faith into the Empire, was covertly working with Grios to aid the Minmatar in planning their rebellion and believed if the Empire were to be successful at Vakathioth, the rebellion would ultimately fall. Forewarned, the Jove were able to meet the Amar fleet with a perfect counter. The Amar fleet was composed mostly of battleships and heavy cruisers. Its support was light, leaving the fleet sluggish and unguarded. The Jove countered with small wings of frigates, while the Amar scored the first kill, destroying a stationary Jove ship. The Jove frigates quickly reached full speed and were able to pin down the Amar vessels. It was then that a Jovian mothership was brought onto the field. An ancient vessel of a size nearly unmatched throughout New Eden, it had been equipped with the latest and most devastating of Jove weaponry. Each shot was capable of destroying an Amar battleship entirely. The Amar, finding their ships pinned by Jove frigates and being picked apart by long-range cruiser fire and the mothership's doomsday weapon, fell into chaos. Their lines of communication were broken and the Amar battle doctrine refused to surrender or retreat. The entire battle lasted just under six hours and ended with the majority of the Amar ships lost, while the Jove had lost only a third of their vessels. The Empire was shocked by the complete loss to the Jove. It quickly regrouped and planned a second assault, using different tactics that would be capable of countering the Jove frigates. However, the Jove, meanwhile, withdrew from their border systems and regrouped for a more concentrated defense. The second battle never came, however. Shortly after, feeling the Amar being weak due to the loss against the Jove, the Minmatar took the opportunity to rebel, aided by the actions of the Grius and sympathetic elements within the Galante Federation. The Empire quickly turned its eyes on the Minmatar and entered into a hasty peace treaty with the Jove. The Amar were unsuccessful in containing the Minmatar rebellion, in part because of the morale blows suffered by the loss to the Jove. The Jove, on the other hand, achieved a reputation of invincibility that spared them any further assaults from the Empire or other races. That's pretty much it uh, we, that we have on the Jove regarding um, mid to recent information. However, we'll try to dove, dive a little bit deeper in our next episode and we'll try to focus a bit on the sleepers and how exactly the Jove came to be from the sleepers because that's ultimately um, an interesting topic to cover.
Thank you guys for watching. A very big shout out to my channel supporters. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.